Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfet. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call today with the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. They exchanged good wishes on the holy month of Ramadan, wishing the two brotherly countries and people, as well as the Arab and Islamic nations, many happy returns and further growth and prosperity. A telephone call was held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Kuwaiti Emir, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. The two leaders exchanged congratulations and good wishes, marking the holy month of Ramadan, wishing the two brotherly countries many happy returns of the occasion and the Arab and Islamic nations more progress. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein of Jordan on the 100th anniversary of the establishing of the Jordanian state. His Majesty wished His Majesty King Abdullah II good health and happiness and Jordan further progress and prosperity. His Majesty the King praised the pioneering achievements and the continuous successes made by Jordan in all fields which were appreciated and admired by all and reinforced its high position at all regional and global levels. His Majesty affirmed his pride in the solid bilateral ties which embody a long history of understanding, coordination, cooperation, appreciation, the Jordanian support under the leadership of His Majesty the Jordanian monarch towards Bahrain. His Majesty the King affirmed Bahrain's supportive stance towards Jordan and all the decisions and measures it takes to maintain its security and stability and safeguard its national gains, praying to Allah the Almighty to protect Jordan and its people and repatriate security, prosperity and stability under the leadership of His Majesty King Abdullah II. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a congratulatory take cable to His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein of Jordan on the 100th anniversary of the founding of the Hashmid Kingdom of Jordan. In the cable, His Royal Highness noted that strong bilateral ties between the two kingdoms are anchored in historical ties, shared experiences, and a strong mutual support. His Royal Highness reaffirmed Bahrain's support for all measures Jordan takes to maintain its security and stability. His Royal his Highness also sent a similar cable to Jordan's Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Al Hussein bin Abdullah II. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa today met with the U.S. Embassy in charge of the affairs, Margaret Nardi, at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of strategic and historic ties between Bahrain and the U.S. and the importance of further strengthening cooperation and coordination across various sectors. His Royal Highness noted the beneficial partnership in relation to COVID-19 efforts and in facilitating the provision of vaccinations to the kingdom. Regional and international topics of common interest were also discussed. For her part, Nardi extended her gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and noted His Royal Highness's continued support to furthering Bahrain-U.S. ties. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, held a media meeting with the editors in chief of local newspapers in the presence of His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that the Bahraini sports have made great achievements globally, as to the great and unlimited interest of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He stated that the Bahraini sports owed their development to His Majesty the King who dedicated thoughts and time to them and accorded great attention and encouragement to the all athletes. His Highness added that the sports sector is also receiving great attention from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, which was evident through the government's adoption of numerous initiatives to boost sports, including the sports professionalism law. He also noted the role of His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa in following up and implementing Istijaba initiatives, hailing his keen 
keenness on promoting the laws and legislative, technical and administrative aspects that boosts youth and sports activities in the kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Nasser noted that the Istijaba Vice Chairman, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, has also made laudable efforts and was able to make many achievements in the program. His Highness said that Bahrain is looking with optimism at the future of sports as a result of the interest of His Majesty the King and the follow-up and interest of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, expressing confidence in the capabilities of His Highness Sheikh Khalid in assuming the leadership of the Bahraini sports movement that have had a great impact on the advancement of Bahraini sports. For his part, the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, the SCYS, and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, the BOC, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, said that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa has accorded a priority to Bahraini sports. His Highness stated that in the Istijaba program, the vision of His Majesty the King is followed and Bahraini sports have witnessed a remarkable development, especially in the legislation that organizes its work. His Highness Sheikh Khalid affirmed that the confidence of His Highness Sheikh Nasser and his initiative have contributed to driving the Bahraini sports movement towards numerous achievements. He asserted that the initiative, programs and strategies are provided to the sports sector to ensure a fair, open competitive environment with the aim of conveying to young people the message that the field is for all talents. His Majesty the King's representative for charity work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, witnessed the signing of the cooperation agreement between the Ministry of Labour and Social Development and Huawei Technologies Bahrain within the Opportunities Program, where the agreement was signed by the Minister Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan, Minister of Labour and Social Development and Executive Director of Huawei Bahrain, Jason Kao, in the presence of a number of ministers and officials in the Kingdom and Huawei. His Highness affirmed that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa prioritizes the issue of empowering young people and giving them the opportunity to train, qualify, motivate and gain sufficient experience in all fields to be leaders of the Bahraini labor market. He added that the agreement is one of the important and pioneering steps in the Opportunities Program for training Bahraini youth. His Highness received a commemorative gift from the Vice President of Huawei International, Hu Tao, in appreciation of the interest of His Highness in its work and fields and its pride in His Highness's support for the Bahraini Youth Training Agreement. The President of Huawei also honored a number of ministers and officials. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Royal Guard Commander Zahana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa held an online call with the members of the Royal Guard participating in the Everest mission. His Highness was reassured on their situation and praised this one-of-a-kind accomplishment for the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Highness expressed his keenness to support the team in this mission and expressed full confidence in the team to overcome all challenges. His Highness urged the team to exert their utmost efforts in this challenging mission and express confidence that they will overcome it successfully and wish them further success. The members of the Royal Guard expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for following up on their progress, which gives them further motivation to double the efforts and achieve the desired goal. خطتكم إن شاء الله نهاية يعني موفقة بإذن الله وأنتم يعني قامين بالمهمة في أتم وجه ونتابعكم بشكل يومي وعندنا التراكر بشكل يومي نشوف تحركاتكم ونشوف يعني ما شاء الله البروجرس اللي أنتم تسوونه تقطعون أشواط طويلة وروح المعنوية عندكم نشوفها ما شاء الله يعني ما تحتاج أن الواحد يتصل بكم أو يشوفكم عشان يرفع معنويتكم أنتم ترفعون معنوية الواحد 
فهذه روح الفريق اللي انتم بنيتوها في الفتره الاولى من التدريب ما في شك ان هذه استثمارها كان طيب في المهمه الحقيقيه اللي هي صعود قمه ايفرست ومهمتكم هذه طبعا يعني لاقت استحسان الكثير مو بس في النطاق المحلي ولكن النطاق الدولي ومثل ما انتم شفتوا فالحمد لله على كل حال يعني انتم خير سفراء وهذا علم البحرين اللي وراكم ان شاء الله انه بيحلق في اعلى قمه في العالم ومثل ما قلت لكم قبل لا تمشون من عندنا هني ان انتم يعني الحقيقه مفخره لنا كلنا وشوفكم اليوم بس في في بيس كامب كمرحله اولى ان شاء الله يكفي ولكن يعني المهمه ما راح تتم ان شاء الله الا اذا صعدنا هذه القمه بعزمكم وان شاء الله لقائنا يعني بيكون بين فتره وفتره كل ما رجعتوا ان شاء الله بيس كامب عشان ناخذ من عندكم من الاخبار فهذه الحين اللقاء الاول من بيس كامب وان شاء الله يعني الامور ميسره باذن الله Our Royal Guard team of climbers are stepping up, continuing their attempt to reach the summit of Mount Everest in the Himalayas in Nepal. The enthusiastic team have already climbed 4,900 meters in their ascent to reach the Kambu Lace for Icefall Base, which lies at an altitude of 5,486 meters. The National Security Advisor Royal Guard Commander Zahana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa is following up the team in its ascent to achieve their goal. He expressed confidence in the ability of the team to climb Mount Everest, embellish the Royal Guard's annals of landmark achievements and hoist Bahrain's flag on the highest peak in the world. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said that the success in reaching the Everest base camp confirms the great efforts made by the team in the past period and he wished them success in their adventure. His Highness added that the team would have two days to acclimatize to the new altitude before conducting a three-day training in ice climbing and ladder crossing. The team will be directed to Sharpas of Seven Summit Strike, the SST, at all times, with whom they have established an amazing professional relationship over the past seven months of training. All the members of the team are fit and healthy, although they have developed high-altitude symptoms at some point in their ascent to reach the summit. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said every day the team members check their oxygen saturation, which at this stage stands at about 85%. His Highness also noted that the more days they get acclimatized, the better they will feel. The Ashura Council held its weekly meeting remotely presided over by its chairman Ali bin Saleh Saleh. The council approved the recommendations of the Public Facilities and Environment Committee on a number of articles of a draft law on the environment. The council also approved a Public Facilities and Environment Committee's recommendation that the proposal on the strategic inventory of commodities may be considered. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, held a session of discussion with the Minister of Foreign and European Affairs of Malta, Amarist Bartolo. The Minister of Foreign Affairs praised the close relations between Bahrain and Malta based on foundations of mutual respect and constructive cooperation. He stressed Bahrain's aspiration to enhance bilateral cooperation for the benefit of both countries and people. For his part, the Maltese Minister of Foreign and European Affairs hailed the strong bilateral relations, noting their development at all levels. He also affirmed his country's keenness on further building on joint cooperation with Bahrain, wishing the kingdom further progress and prosperity. The two sides discussed means of enhancing their ties in addition to the latest regional and international developments of mutual concern. We are two small states who want to live with peace with everybody and to give a better living to our people. And we are exploring in what areas we can work together. Areas like tourism, uh, air travel, the fight against organized crime, education, and uh, food security. And uh, we are having talks here uh, in Manama, where we can bring together our, our two countries and also the private sector uh, to work in these areas. The Assistant Attorney General Councillor Wa'il Bu'alai stated that based on the instructions of the Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadl al buainin regarding strengthening criminal justice procedures, developing and modernizing the system of judicial work, a timetable has been set for the wide application of the alternative penal code through the legal and objective identification of convicts who meet the conditions for applying that law. The new law allows the substitution of the alternative punishment for the penalty depriving these 
sentence freedom within the framework of keenness on the continuous updating of the list of convicts who meet the conditions for the application of that law and in a manner that meets the royal directives in this regard to expand the application of its provisions taking into account the personal and family circumstances of the convict and the justifying humanitarian reasons for that. The Moon Sighting Committee will meet today at the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, the SCIA headquarters, to receive news and testimonies from Bahrain and the Islamic world on the birth of the Ramadan crescent, signaling the advent of Ramadan. In a statement today, the Council urged the public to report their testimonies to the Moon Sighting panel. Under the patronage of the President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, the SCIA, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, Chairman of the Sunni Endowments Council, Sheikh Dr. Rashid bin Mohammed Al Hajri, today opened the Sharif Al Awadi Mosque at Hurat Sanad, built at the expenses of the sons of the dignitary, Sheikh Khan Al Farsi. The, mos the mosque was designed within the specifications of the modern Islamic style to accommodate 900 worshippers of men and over 300 worshippers in the prayer room for women, including the Friday prayer and daily prayers at the ground floor and a majlis for special occasions in addition to a number of facilities and necessary services. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism conducted several inspection visits in accordance with the shopping flow in preparation for the holy month of Ramadan. To speak more about the matter, we are joined by the Inspection Director at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Ms. Muna Al-Alawi. Hello, Ms. Muna. It's good to have you here with us tonight. Can you tell us about the efforts of the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism for the holy month of Ramadan? Yeah, hello and uh, good evening. Yes, the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism is always keen to guarantee a continuous supply of the basic commodities of fruits and vegetables in the market. And as you know, there are unexpected events during the pandemic, so the close monitoring done by the Ministry gives indication that might affect the supply chain of uh, any of these commodities and help, therefore, to resolve the issues at its early stage. And as you know, that the blessed month of Ramadan drives the consumption always to a higher stage uh, for the fruits and vegetables. So the ministry's role is to coordinate and integrate the efforts with the other government entities to remove any barriers that may delay or prevent, for example, the availability, the availability of uh, all the necessary items or may cause, for example, the increase in price. Mm -hmm. And how is the ministry ensuring security, securing sufficient quantities of goods and preserving their quality? Yes, in this regard, the Under Secretary of Control and Resources made a visit to the central market in coordination with the Chamber of Commerce and, uh, and Industry and the capital municipality to ensure that there are adequate stocks of fruits and vegetables with stable prices and, the, and the lots of varieties. And I can say that, rest assured, that the visit revealed that there are abundance of such items with different varieties and affordable prices also. In addition, since last uh, March, last, uh, last year, uh, we have continuous visits, a daily visit to the central market, taking prices of the uh, fruits and vegetables to absorb any illegal practices, for example, that may affect the stability of the, the prices or the availability of the stocks also. And uh, that was the Inspections Director at the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Ms. Muna al Thank you very much for joining us. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 562,253 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 376,815 had taken the second. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination.
The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 10,959 with, uh, with 1,148 recoveries, 1,122 registered new cases and three deaths. 348 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 711 are contacts of active cases and 63 are travel related. The deceased were a 61 and 42-year-old citizens and a 57-year-old expatriate. The ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the family of the disease and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus. The Labour Market Regularity Authority started the third and final phase of transitioning its expat management system and its digital infrastructure to the Amazon Web Services Data Center, which extends to December of this year. To speak more about the system and transition, we are now joined by LMRA's Director of Programs Development, Mr. Youssef Ahmed Dekhil. Hello, Mr. Youssef. It's good to have you here with us tonight. Can you tell us more about your recent move of Labour Market Regularity Authority systems to the Amazon? on cloud AWS. Hello, good evening. Uh, yes, that's true. We have recently migrated our expatriate management system to Amazon Cloud Services. And we are in the middle of the third stage that is meant for more enhancement and more optimization. And it will inshallah end by December this year. Uh, actually, EMS, manage, uh, EMS manages expatriate life cycle starting from the submission of a work permit until the end of the work contract and the departure of the expatriate. So EMS manages more than half of the population in the Kingdom of Bahrain. At MRA, more than 90% of our transactions are being executed in EMS, and annually EMS processes around 1.9 million main transactions directly received from EMS users. That will in turn execute more than 48 million transactions inside EMS. In general, that will also involve digital communication with other systems in the government and in non-government organizations. Mm -hmm. And EMS has around 20 different systems to system life integration. That's a short brief about EMS and what we have done recently. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Youssef, what are the different benefits of this move? Oh, there are so many different benefits. Uh, first of all, EMS migration to the cloud is one of our big projects that was uh, that we could successfully achieve with our partners in the government, and it is aligned with the national strategy to migrate government systems to the cloud. So some of the uh, benefits are uh, it will help LMRA achieve lower operational costs. It will improve our speed to the market so we can serve our customer faster and better. And it will also guarantee fast system response and high availability, inshallah. This is a short brief also about the benefits. Well, that uh, sounds amazing. And that was the Director of Programs Development at LMRA, Mr. Yusuf Ahmed Dekhil. Thank you very much for being with us.